Roger, sir. The bridge is cleared with the exception of the Ofswatch lookout, two lines of communication, two bridge flaps. Roger, I have the ship. Clear the bridge, come below, shut the upper lid. You have the ship. Clear the bridge, come below, shut the upper lid. Aye, sir. Ship control, tell maneuvering to obey telegraph's dive. Obey telegraph's dive. Roger. Too quick. Open main vents. What are main vents? Diving down, diving down. Two down. Two down. Two down, sir. Four casing under. Her Majesty's submarine War Spite is one of the Royal Navy's 13 nuclear-powered hunter-killer submarines. Its role in wartime would be to hunt and to sink Russian submarines. Five down, 100 feet, then back to 65 feet. Five down, 100, back to 65. Uh, search. Oh, shit. During the Falklands conflict, Warspite patrolled the South Atlantic. It was her sister submarine, HMS Conqueror, that sank the Argentine cruiser General Belgrano. Warspite has a crew of no less than 110. Crowded into their secret world, they may not see daylight for weeks on end. Warspite's maximum speed is a secret. So is its maximum depth. OK, lads, today we're going to talk about escape. To escape, you must have the knowledge and the determination to get out. If you haven't got the determination, you might get a boot up the rear end. OK? Right. The suit. To get into the suit, first, you must put on the old favourite nappy. Not a laughing matter. You might be on the surface waiting to be picked up quite a long time. So we put the nappy on next to our skin. When you start to go up, ascend to the surface, you can breathe out normally. You can whistle. You can call me a bastard, whatever you want. But you can breathe out normally, please. Don't hold your breath, don't do anything. Just breathe normally, OK? Um, if we do have an accident, what is our real chances of getting out? Well, we have a good chance of getting out. We wouldn't go to this expense of all this equipment if you didn't have a chance of getting out. And if you remember, a few years ago, they did experiments with the hooded descent equipment off of Malta from an old boat, uh, 600 feet, and it was a successful experiment. Open three tube rear door. Open three tube rear door. Three tube rear door open. Ram three tube, ram slow. War Spite is the modern equivalent of the battleship. Each of its remotely controlled torpedoes can sink a warship or a submarine. In a few days, Warspite will be at war, although not a single torpedo will be fired. The submarine is on its way to Ocean Safari. Right, we're all assembled for the operations brief for Ocean Safari, which starts the day after tomorrow. Ocean Safari will be an unusually important naval exercise. For two weeks, ships and aircraft from Europe, America and Canada will simulate a future war between Russia and the West. In a NATO exercise, just to remind you, there are two sides, the blue simulating the NATO alliance and orange who simulate the Soviets. In this case, we are going to be the Soviets, uh, or orange, which is always more fun, playing the birdies. Warspite's captain, Commander Jonathan Cook, is looking forward to ocean safari. Playing at Russian submarines will be more interesting than a recent long patrol around the Falklands. So I won't say any more in general preamble, but uh, pass it, you are now over to the first lieutenant, who will give you the details. Right. Cook's um, second in command is Lieutenant Commander David White. The uh, sort of pseudo-political view that we have as a... Uh, orange um, is as follows. The breakdown in relations between blue and orange has been caused by blue propaganda and accusations over orange involvement in blue politics. Blue's increase in military expenditure 
has caused us to prepare for the defence of our homeland. This has been misinterpreted by Blue, who has placed its forces on high alert and is deploying carrier task forces between the Azores and Portugal in order to defend its sea line of communications to Europe. Our aim, as Orange, is to shadow these forces and then strike the first blow by preemptive attack on the 8th of June. And that's E-Day plus one. Wednesday. Stick it in your ear. Would you? It's still alive, I think. <laughs> that's normal. What's that, Lenny? She's flying, mate. It's a veg in here, mate. <laughs> right, gentlemen, pin your ears back. Just come from our uh, brief about the Ocean Safari. Basically, uh, it's as follows. War spikes, instructions. Pay attention. We're to intercept and track task group 45.1. Pay attention. Right, the first target is going to be the French ship Foch, which is a <laughs> which is a uh, destroyer. We're going to track it for a couple of days, sink it, and then go on for the carrier that it's that it's rendezvousing with. Basically, that's all. If you've got any questions, the first lieutenant's available to answer them. Tab off. Type 47 DDG. Right. <laughs> Next. Type 22. Type 22. Like brazen, in fact. Yes, sir, it's just brazen. Slightly different from uh, broadsword. Yes. It hasn't got ears on the side of its tongue. <laughs> right. Next one. Type 22. Type 22. There will be scores of different warships and merchantmen for Warspite to attack during ocean safari. Sightings of these targets through the periscope may be brief and distant. Quick recognition will be essential. Gordon, yeah. 0 to 32 knots in 1 minute and 15 seconds. That's true. That's true. That's a bit good. Illustrious. Illustrious. Invincible. Yeah. Latest uh, production by <laughs> Airfix. A submarine is a weapon of stealth. It can stay submerged for weeks on end, silently cruising the oceans of the world, listening for the rhythms of enemy propellers, watching for the telltale smudge on the horizon. Throughout ocean safari, ships and aircraft will be hunting for this elusive shadow in the water. So the periscope will only be raised when necessary, and the sonar operators, who listen for distant propellers, must also maintain a constant vigilance on the submarine's worst enemy, its own noise. There's a strange but faint noise. The sonar set is focused on it. Oh, sonar controller. Oh. We have a loud casing rattle audible sector. Oh, no. We have a noise in the outer hull of the submarine that we didn't have before. Now, noise is extremely important to us, or lack of it, but we must keep as quiet as possible, and it's particularly important in this major exercise that we're off to do. It's the way that we'll be detected is by the noise signature which we produce. We therefore, uh, having discovered that we've picked up this noise at some stage in the last 24 hours on the surface, we're going to surface again to see if we can establish what bit of equipment has got loose. It's the, um, it's the David. It hasn't been lashed properly. Okay. So, that, what do, you, do we use this one for lashing or what? Oh, good thing I like it. Uh, well, I want to use... No, that's not good enough. It's a bloody great heavy thing. <coughs> hmm? That's not good enough. The, um... David, which is used for embarking stores, one of the lashings has broken free, and the padding for uh, stopping it from rattling has come adrift. And what we've got to do now is relash it. Hello, first time speaking. We have found the rattle 
under the uh, casing by the torpedo loading hatch well. This has been lashed and will be diving shortly. First watch, watch diving. Warspite is speeding silently towards the Azores. Stand by for positions, DCV. It's day one of Ocean Safari. The sonar operators listen intently for the sounds of distant warships. But at first, all they hear is a school of dolphins. Initially, sounds like a warship, sir. Go to uh, scale 80 on the uh, LPD. Revs are constant. Ship control, pipe, first watch attack teams close up. First watch attack teams close up. Interesting sonar contact. First watch. No, here we go. The rest of the wicked. The situation is we have come right. across the Canadian escort group, which were not expected uh, to be in this area. Uh, and the one in sight is the Iroquois class, the Huron. We'll track him for a bit and see what's going on. Stand by, target set up, track 3-3. Three, three. Needs to be ready. Should be, red at 154. Ah, ah, well, depth now. 73, they're coming up. Up. Yeah, he's there's a bit of rain come down. Yes, he's just visible in the mist. Down. Right, Citref attack team. At the moment we've just got the Huron in sight, but there are three other ships in this group. In view of the fact that we've sighted the Huron, we tell him to hold reports. Hold reports. Get a grip on both the sound room and your uh, CEP. There's a strong possibility the other ships of the group may be in the vicinity. For that reason, we'll stay at periscope depth, track the Huron, with a view to reporting him later when he's out of range, and see if the other ships of the group are around. <laughs> World at one. Our activities this morning. We we're in the start position on time. And 15 minutes later, we encountered a Canadian destroyer, Curon. It was marched through at about 24 knots, a couple of thousand yards astern. Our present position is almost midway between the Azores and Portugal, 360 miles to the east northeast of the Azores. The world news has been distributed to the messes. Uh, a short bit about the election, with the Labour and Alliance parties issuing counterclaims. A Russian ship on the Volga caught fire over the weekend, with reported heavy loss of life. Further details have not yet been forthcoming. London Transport is planning to introduce a fleet of minibuses. On the internal front, grounds this evening will be at 20 hundred. That's all. Rounds. First Lieutenant's rounds, a routine daily inspection of the submarine. Warspite's galley has enough stores to feed the crew for months. The submarine seldom needs to surface. It makes its own fresh water and air. The recent patrol to the South Atlantic lasted for 16 weeks. Evening, gentlemen. Not watching a film tonight? No. And then, what we're going to do now, we've had this Canadian ship this morning, and, well, actually early this afternoon. 
And we now go into the ASW barrier. So, great emphasis on noise, because uh, a lot of people are looking, at, looking for us. Ships, aircraft, Nimrods, Atlantiques, and uh, all sorts of sensors. When we get out the other side, we then may have a chance to get our own back at some shipping ourselves. Certainly uh, tomorrow afternoon is when we actually do our first check. Okay? That's Browns. The days of hot bunking, two men taking it in turns to use the same bunk, have passed. Everyone on Warspite has his own bunk. Forty men sleep in this area, the size of a domestic garage. Behind the curtains is the only oasis of privacy a man can have. Personal space is precious. This is my locker, very small locker, and uh, all my gear's got to go in there. My very own gear, and also any other equipment involved with my job. That's all got a pile in there. I've got to get a life jacket in. Which has essential equipment. I've got a few books here I've got to take with me. Oh, I've got steaming boots. I've got to go in there. And a foul weather jacket, which is more essential equipment. Cleaning gear. And more work clothes, namely eight socks and everything else. That's where you live. This is your living area, really. Yeah, it's, it's very cramped. That's like right. Dolby when he brought these 15 men down I'm here. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All submariners used to be volunteers. But with the arrival of the big nuclear powered submarines like Warspite, this has changed. Now, despite the 20% extra pay they receive, about half the ratings have to be drafted from surface ships. <laughs> The secrecy of much of submarines' operations and the cramped, artificial way of life combined to make visitors ask some strange questions. Being a nuclear submariner, can you still have babies? <laughs> I've never had one. No, because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you suffer from homosexual tendencies? Is that the question? <laughs> This means Harry is very good on the floor. Do we, Stevie? No. Is it true that if you live near a nuclear reactor, you're going to glow in the dark? <laughs> yes. Seriously, <laughs> 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 the first question is, you know, most people can't sort of imagine how long you stop down a submarine in this sort of confinement. And then you Stinger know, tells him he's a doctor. <laughs> oh, it depends how long the bar's open. Yeah. But, uh, I always ask about the old cluster. They, they always ask where the windows are. Yeah, you know. where's the windows? Where's the, the, the windows? Uh, see yeah. on the yeah. telly. Yeah. 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 Oh, whether or not we get claustrophobic, we get agoraphobic, we're frightened to go up top. There's people who, uh, when you're on a trip or something, you get the chance to go up top. People don't go up top. You get some of them, they run up there, you know, I mean, a bit of fresh air and all that, like, you know. But uh, half the time, the majority of people... are still in the bed. In the bed, well, they're, just, they're either yeah. in the bed or they're, they're sat downstairs or something, aren't they, you know? It's, it's a fairly small world of submarine service still, even though it's, it's increased dramatically in about the last 15 years or so since it brought you to the boat. But it's still a fairly small world. Um, discipline's different, although it's not non-existent, it still exists, but uh, it's, it's more different. of a self -discipline. different sort of a life. The difference between general service and being a submariner is, instead of knowing your own job in general service, as a submariner, you have to be some sort of cross-trained to know that if anything goes wrong, you've been the nearest person to the valve or the system that's gone wrong, you can avert the accident. That is the difference. In general service, you stick to your own branch. In submarines, you expect to know somebody else's branch as well. It gives you more job satisfaction knowing that you can do a bit of somebody else's job rather than just being one job. That's why they give the extra money. They call it extra knowledge money. It becomes a money trap. Um, because you, you're used to that money, that extra money, and being away and... No, I save it. And the rest of it. You don't save it. Nobody saves <laughs> it. Yeah, they don't. Uh, and you get used to that money. You can't afford to go back to general And you can't service. afford to go back to general service. Right, you become right, used to that standard of living. Tolerance is important. It's got to be. You, you learn to take some 
a lot of insults in fun, and you, you've just got to learn to live and let live. You must. If you didn't, that's that's what really uh, get to you in this job. If you have an argument with a bloke in a mess, you've still got to live with him for the rest of the trip. And just being the tolerance, that's the biggest problem on board. Being tolerant about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest task, especially on a long patrol, is you've got mail coming on board and you've got to write mail going off. Right now. What do you write about? <laughs> oh, well, I saw a movie the other nice. day, you know. Where, <laughs> <laughs> you know I really you can't write about it. You saw a few penguins and. and uh, you can't yeah. write about what sort of operations we've been on well, when I was or anything like that. that. <laughs> so you're there stuck with a letter and what do you write about? Nothing. You've got nothing to write about. When I first got married, I went straight on an eight-week patrol. I came back almost to a divorce because she wondered why I hadn't written to her. You know, I thought, what if? Ah, you would have lost it. <laughs> the wives have to cope with the fact that you're away for such a long time. And then, when you come home, most men automatically try to take over the running of the household again. Their wife is already used to doing it. So you get a lot of friction at home for the first few months. If you, uh, do get any more if you're home for months at all. Also, the, the wives themselves, they they tend to back you up, but they don't really want to know what happened during the trip because they've had their own problems. And they don't, they're not interested in anything you've got to say to them if, you, if you've got something that happened bad on the patrol. They don't want to know because it only makes their, life, their side of it worse when you're away again. And you tend to, I don't know, make light of everything. They make light of the wives in the mess as it is. They don't like to think of them at home on their own. I think it's a problem across the board with virtually everybody. The separation is, isn't exactly the most pleasant aspect of submarine life or service life in general. Uh, nothing inside. Keep 69 feet, down attack. No contact off passive. Warspite's first attack in ocean safari is to be on the French aircraft carrier Foch. The submarine will simulate firing short-range missiles launched from its torpedo tubes, which Russian submarines are known to possess. It is to be a coordinated attack with other submarines and ships, and must happen exactly on time. But at the moment, there is still one major difficulty. no transmissions pinned on Paris. With five hours to go until I'm instructed to launch an attack on the French task group, I still only have a general idea as to where he is, and I need to be much more accurate than that. So I am becoming anxious for more accurate information, either from my own sensors, or as given to me from either the surface task group on our side or the air aircraft that are on reconnaissance. So over the next few hours, we'll be using every method we can think of to try and localize the French task group to produce um, information on them sufficiently accurate to launch uh, our missiles. Do you hear there? Assume that the sonar search quiet state. Assume that the sonar search quiet state. There are to be no noisy evolutions. All requests for machinery to the control room. That is all. Four hours to go, and Cook has a problem. The hunter has been caught by surprise. Frequency six. Power, so you saw a white flare. Did you see anything else? No, it was white flare. It's about two uh, cable away, and um, to the right of that, there was light green dye in the water. I didn't do an all round. I'd only been three quarters way around and all round, so I didn't see any aircraft. <laughs> It must have been an aircraft. Up attack. Well. Yeah. Yes, I have an Atlantic right astern, 5,000 yards. Six down. Six down. Revolutions 8 0, down attack. Keep 425 feet. Plot, just check that there is no friendly Atlantique on task today. 80 feet. 
One of the problems when playing blue and orange with your own forces, you don't know when an aeroplane appears, whether it's friend or foe, whereas you hopefully would know in reality. But um, we're just playing safe on this one, taking some evasive measures of precaution. It means that he's uh, localised us. <coughs> However, war has not broken out, so that uh, all it means is that rather embarrassingly or inconveniently he uh, knows where we were at that time. Only two hours to go. No contacts, 2008. War Spite has wasted valuable time hiding from the Atlantique, but is back at periscope depth again. Nothing in sight. I only wish there were. Also watch the search periscope. Roger. The wind's reducing and the sea is virtually flat. Very... Right, nothing in sight. Now, concentrate very much on your watch technique, i.e. four round low power, side in high power. Stick with that, and if you feel you're getting tired, get someone else on. The news is no news, i.e. we have no further information on the force. The only ships we hold are down to the southwest, which we believe to be the UK task group, which we are not tasked against. Uh, and we are hoping uh, to get information either uh, from the broadcast we've just received from shore or by calling UHF to the Orange Task Group, which we're doing at the moment. At this stage, even if we get some information, uh, we'll be quite pushed to set up the attack and discharge the weapons um, to coordinate the other powers at the right time. So we just have to hope that our fellow uh, Orange, i.e. the Gato and the task group, are successful. Right. That was, uh, again, a negative result, calling on the uh, coordination frequency of the task group. Uh, wherever everybody is, they're not where we are. There will be good days ahead, then. We live to fight another day. But the day is not yet over. Within 15 minutes, Warspite finds out where the Fock is, and the hunter is back on the trail. Bring 125 and 6 tubes to readiness state 1. You know the target, Fock. Number of missiles, 4. Now, we're going to fire at 1805. Okay? HMS Warspite is playing the part of a Russian submarine in a major naval exercise called Ocean Safari. Warspite has spent the first day of the exercise unsuccessfully searching for its target, the aircraft carrier Foch. But suddenly all has changed. This is good news. Uh, our fellow submarine... Uh, what's that? Hold it away from you, for Christ's sake. Our fellow submarine has found the FOC, which is our primary target, the carrier in the French task group. Uh, the position is only 15 to 20 minutes old. We've altered towards, and we now have a con sonar contact on that bearing. Uh, and if nothing else comes up, I shall fire on that contact shortly. We have a good field for range, so it'll be well within the missile parameters uh, of the weapon we're simulating. Right, are we ready to fire? Fire! Land by discharge. Narrative. Time now, AC. One minute to impact. One minute to impact. 30 seconds to minimum range. Roger. Well, let's get down on depth, ship control. Five seconds to impact. Three, two, one, impact. Five down, 425 feet. Do you hear there, Captain speaking? We have just carried out a simulated harpoon attack on the French task group, attacking the carrier, the Foch, 
that was a preemptive strike as we had the satisfactory business of being the baddies in this exercise. So we've attacked first. That means that war is now broken out for exercise and that any future opposition contacts we come into touch with, we will be attacking. That is all. For the rest of the exercise, Warspite will search for and attack heavily defended convoys of merchant ships. Come right, 070. For her captain, Commander Jonathan Cook, it'll be a welcome change from the tedium of a recent long patrol in the South Atlantic. <laughs> For the next two weeks, he will be testing Warspite's sophisticated systems and her crew's experience to the limits. He'll pit them against the dozens of anti-submarine warships and helicopters from NATO that will be hunting him. He will also preside over the other side of the crowded submarine's life, the everyday rituals that carry on regardless of the operational excitement. M.E.M. Kendall. Through the captain. M.E.M. Kendall, sir, to be advanced to L.M.E.M. brackets L brackets submarines to date the 10th of March, 1983. Right, Kendall, let's hear from your divisional chief first. Sir. M.E.M. Kendall to continue to work in a determined manner both his watchkeeping position and also carrying out defect repair work. He's enthusiastic towards any task given to and he's prepared to work long hours to achieve good results. Fully recommended for advancement. All right, Kendall, how long have you been with the submarine? Five and a half years with gaps. No, sir. No gaps? You didn't go away on a course or anything? No, sir. No. Did you manage to get inboard for the last trip? Yes, sir. Yes. Right, Kendall. Well, this is a step off the bottom, isn't it? And I'm going to give you a certificate of advancement. I would draw your attention to what's written on the back. The duty of every leading rating of each branch of the service to ensure that order and regularity are preserved in his vicinity. So I'd recommend you to read that. And I'll just sign this for you. Right. Advance to LMEM brackets LSM to date 10th of March 1983. Advance to LMEM brackets L brackets SM to date 10th of March 1983. Salute the captain. Left turn. Carry on outside. Thank you, sir. Yes, my lady. Jonathan Cook is the only man in Warspite's 110-strong crew who enjoys the privilege of his own cabin. All Royal Naval submarines afford their captains this luxury. The captain's relations uh, with the ship's company are always an issue of interest, and they do differ in submarines from those in a surface ship. In a surface ship, the captain uh, can maintain a greater degree of separation from the officers and, indeed, from the ship's company. He eats alone in his cabin, and he only goes into the wardroom uh, when invited by the mess president, who's the first to This is in surface ships. Uh, in, a, in submarines, and I'm talking generally rather than for this particular submarine, uh, that has never been possible. And therefore, there is a closer um, degree of companionship, perhaps, between the captain and, and the wardroom, because um, the captain eats in the wardroom and um, is in there more of the time. Also, the general cramped conditions of submarines and the long length of patrols mean that people are thrown together. Nonetheless, of course, the captain, because of his position, must maintain a distance. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the other hand, it does lose the old spirit of the mess. I reckon for sort of one a week, Sunday night, to have a good old-fashioned movie where there's real girl over the deck. Real Fred Crumby and never, no substitute to a entertainment. The same applies down the scale with the ship's company. The officers see the ship's company much more closely than they might in a surface ship. But they also similarly have to maintain some sort of distance whilst having an informal relationship. Yeah, you've got to take to the cup hunt. And the English Scotland. And the English Scotland. And the Derby. We've got about six copies of the... Uh, the Derby in England and Scotland match. Yeah. Scotland match. I mean, well, as far as the relations between officers and ratings are concerned, the Christian name should never be used in either direction, and uh, nor, for instance, do I encourage the use of Christian names uh, even between the officers in the control room area, 
um, i.e. when they're at work, obviously in the mess, in the wardroom, when they're off duty, there's no problem at all. But uh, it sounds sloppy and it's a bad example to the ship's company for officers to be using Christian names to each other in, uh, in the control room. Yes, ball going in now. Well, the ideal aspect, sufficiently far away with the sea running, I'm not worried about counter detection on the periscope. Down. It's day seven of Ocean Safari. Cook has spotted an anti-submarine helicopter on the prowl. Watch attack team close up. Ship control, pipe. First watch attack teams close up. First watch attack teams close up. First watch stand two. It's 72 feet. The helicopter is dipping its sonar search equipment into the water, listening for submarines. Its presence means that the convoy Warspite is searching for must be close. But Cook is concerned about possible detection. What he's doing is carrying out a search pattern ahead of the force. Uh, it confirms that the force are only about uh, probably 30 miles to the west, moving towards us. And this is a form of advanced screen, helicopters going out ahead of the force. And he may be random and dipping. It may be just bad luck that he's come in quite near. Yes, they don't hold him. Um, I find him very hard to believe. He's not near enough to be in contact, but near enough to have us uh, concerned. I think that's the view of the range of the force. And maybe he hasn't got much to gain by being pressed at home. No, we can get him. On the other hand, I think he may be dipping below the left. Cook must decide whether to take the submarine deep. If he does, he's less likely to be detected but risks not finding his prey, the convoy. Yes. No. I suspect he's just dipping at 90 feet. Well, it is right on the MLA. I think we'll seek gently away up to the north. Come right to north. Three down. 425 feet. It's a prudent move to go deep because... Uh, when the helicopter puts his um, ball in the air, a ball in the water, he will put it at a certain depth. And what we're going to use now is the layer where the temperature in the water changes uh, to, go to go below that to reduce the chances of him detecting us. The pattern I feel he's using at the moment, he's right in the line of the forces intended advance and he's doing what's called random dipping i.e. jumping from place to place and putting his sonar ball down um, because he's looking in the most likely area, likely area for a submarine for an enemy submarine so what we are doing we've got no interest obviously or ability to attack him we want to get round him without being detected so we're presenting him with the minimum aspect i.e. we're putting our stern to him so that there's the least amount of submarine to present itself for a detection. And we're also going down below the lair. You <laughs> <laughs> haven't had a big shootout yet. The reason being that the weakest character is the captain and nobody's got <laughs> to make the move yet. <laughs> well, Alaska's looking pretty good. A wolf weak. would get four armies uh, at the moment. I think he has to be zapped. In the Ukraine. Right, right. Change of plan. Great Britain. Game for Southern Europe. Go to Scandinavia, sir. Yes. I'll go for Scandinavia. There was no need for you to offer that advice. <laughs> 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 <I thought. laughs> um, that'll do. Take a card. Oh, I'll just take the three to start with. Really. Oh, and the yeah, set. Come on, you oh, can do it. Right, the way, Right, a spirit of defence from you, sir. Okay. Right, sir. Yeah, quits. Oh, two dice defense, sir. Big rollers. Ah, you've bitten off more than you can chew here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. And I think Northern so. Europe from Southern Europe. <coughs> hmm. Oh, cocky's out. Cocky. Oh, cocky. Oh, very oh, cocky. Sorry about that one. Oh. <laughs> I think it puts Walt pretty firmly in the public enemy number one squad. There you go. Oh. 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 You could stop now, Walt. You could have saved your career. Uh, <laughs> I'm never oh. conscious, particularly, of having experienced loneliness. 
That's not very good news for the rest of you, actually. I mean, it's a great expression, the loneliness of command. Uh, and I think, certainly in surface ships, uh, the captains, on, on, particularly on long and boring periods at sea, uh, must experience uh, loneliness. Uh, in a submarine, I don't think it is a problem for the captain. He, uh, I can withdraw to my cabin if I wish to be solitary. Uh, but I can't always go into the wardroom. Yes, we have the convoy down. We have a convoy in lines, right astern, up. This will just be the nearest tanker. Right, we'll be switching target as soon as we get well, to the Well, there's that. Cut. Range that. Ten and a half minutes. Done. Put you right ahead. No, I'm uh, 35 port. 35 port. Convoy's in at least two lines and maybe more. I can see three merchant ships at the moment. My only concern is the frigate astern of me has turned beam on. He could still be, could still have me in his sonar beams. By all positions, the target is a tanker contact 732. Is he held sonar? No, sir, sector's investigating. Right. Select track 732 on fire control. Selected, sir. Intend firing shortly. Roger, by caps. Speed now. Ready to fire, Captain. Roger. Roger, ready to fire. Ah, all round look for me. Right. Calling out as I go around. Well... There is. Merchant ship there. Merchant ship there. That's two. Merchant ship there. Zero five six. Merchant ship there. Zero five three. Merchant ship there. Zero four seven. Merchant ship there. Zero four three. Merchant ship there. Zero three nine. Merchant ship there. Zero three four. Right, that is all. Eight. Was that a total of eight? Total of eight, sir. Roger. The frigates are turning, they've possibly got a sniff. Sugar. Down. Right. Right. Stand by to fire. Sorry, sir. We, we must fire now because of these frigates. Stand by to fire. Fire. Down. Little steps taken. Down attack fully. Revolution 7 0. Roger, we'll be impacting now. Bad explosion. It's only a computer simulated torpedo that Warspite has released, and indeed, only a simulated hit that it has scored. But the real green flare that it has fired to signal the attack has given the submarine's position away. We are hiding uh, amongst the convoy against possible countermeasures from the escort crew, with the view to coming up again, hidden from sonar search by the convoy, uh, in order to carry out another attack. That seems uh, well. It takes a bit of time. There are a lot of ships in the convoy. Uh, there were eight, eight merchant ships in the convoy, and there were at least six escorts. So we're talking about 14 ships on the surface, which is quite a complex sonar picture to evaluate. Warspite sensitive sonar receivers can distinguish between the high speed propellers of a warship. and the slow, heavy thump of a merchantman. That's some more of the heavy chest. Right? Yes. All right. Four blade. Uh, one twenty RPM. One six, uh, four blades, one two zero. The sonar operators can tell how many propellers a ship has, and even how many blades there are on each one. By analyzing how fast the propellers are turning, they can calculate the ship's speed. It's about 20 miles. They can even tell what the weather is like on the surface by listening for changes in propeller noise as the ship's sterns lift out of the water in heavy seas. We have been moving southeast, knowing there was a British escort, the Brazen, uh, around. Um, and 
we got that in sight at 12,000 yards uh, about 20 minutes ago. Particular um, um, interest of the Brazen is its uh, captain is an ex-submariner who is ex-captain submarine sea training. Uh, so it was with particular pleasure we launched a torpedo attack at him and signaled it with a signal on uh, uh, wireless to um, <coughs> signal the attack. Well, now we knew that we couldn't stick around for long after this form of provocation and are now uh, evading as quickly as we can to the southeast before coming back to try to get in towards the convoy. the end of day seven. Brazen turned out to be a decoy and successfully tempted war spite away from the convoy. There's another week of the exercise to go and Cook will want to find at least one more convoy of unsuspecting merchant ships for his submarine to attack. There's been a general layman's view for almost the entire history of the submarine world that um, submarines are something underhand and ungentlemanly um, goes right back to their introduction in the first decade of this century where they I think, were described as damned un-English. Um, I think the, the, the feeling about being underhand um, also goes back to the, to the last war and U-boats sinking merchant ships. Um, I think the point to make about submarines in the Royal Navy is our primary role is not anti-shipping, it's actually anti-submarine, anti-Soviet submarine, principally. I know that to a layman, a submarine looks uh, extremely um, sinister, but we are conscious of the image we portray, and perhaps uh, don't discourage it. I think... Um, the image of being silent and deadly appeals to some of my ship's company. Red light in the control room. Grumpy! Grumpy. Got a red light in the control room. The control room is in bright red lighting. From sunset to sunrise, periscope watchkeeper's eyes must be kept accustomed to the gloom outside. Nothing inside. But there's little hope of any more targets tonight. Control Ops, coming around 355. Okay, stand by, common parameters, contact 33. Ready. Course 190, speed 12, range 18,700. Well, I've been hearing that you're a bit of a mean man in a bar fight. Is that true? No, not me, sir. Mm. I just hit the smallest guy and always meets hit me. So he's the guy. You always are the smallest guy. <laughs> That's why I want you to come and play these. Oh, thank you very much. And that allows hydraulics to flow around the system. What happens if we lose hydraulics? We go into emergency air. Emergency air, right? Just to wear a suit again. Say again? Just to wear a suit again. Oh, yeah. Let's go with the new romantic. So enjoy the club life. It's a one piece suit with jeans and t shirts. <laughs> Stand by surface set trap. PCB ready. Right, the convoy is ahead and it's about 90 port. Well, right, and there is an absolute morass here. AC, you've got to have a look at this. Yes, right, stand by to fire. I'm going to fire on a large tanker. There's that. Range on his funnel. Use 70 feet. That. 25 minutes. Down. Keep 68 feet. No, I'm 80 port. Target course 032, speed 14. Ready to fire. Track 23, sir. Fire! Fire!
There's that. Well, cut. Down. Far. Yesterday and the day before were exciting, but this beats them all. We're actually going down through the lines of the convoy between the wing. They're in four lines of two ships each, and we're going between the wing line and the next one in. Uh, there was an escort returning to its station, the last escort we attacked, which was a Dutch Cortenaire class. Uh, we've just ducked under, now going under the convoy. So even if he held us briefly, it would have been virtually impossible for us, him to attack us because of the proximity of the merchant ships. Planning to pass down through the convoy, reverse course and come up on their quarter, and with any luck, attack some more of their merchant ships. Going for the next one, there's that! Cut! Far! 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 I haven't had a day like this for a long time. And I am enjoying it. Ah! Next time we're ready, sir. Well... Bearing is that! Cut! Calm and stable! Far! God our Father, watch over our homes and families and friends. Keep them from harm and danger, and may your presence and your peace be always with them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now sing the last verse of the naval hymn, number eight. Surface. Surface. Floor one main ballast. Floor one main ballast. Floor two and three main ballast. Floor two and three main ballast. Floor four, five, and six. Floor four, five, and six main ballast. Stop blowing one. Stop blowing one. Stop blowing two and three. Stop blowing two. Exercises uh, these days where you have a real live convoy to fire at, and um, we consider our tally to have been 12 of the escorting warships, four of their replenishment tankers and 13 of the merchant ships that comprise the convoy, 300,000 tons of merchant shipping. My conscience, not that as a serving officer, that's exactly my responsibility in that I, I obey the instructions of my uh, superiors, but uh, sort of exercise carnage I've described to you would, uh, uh, I think, have uh, some effect on me if it were to happen for real. Thinking of the Belgrano had a tremendous effect on us. It's the first time a large ship like that had been sunk by a British submarine since the Second World War. And uh, it made us realize just what uh, the stakes were down in the Falklands. And uh, we being in the trade, so to speak, were aware, of, for instance, of the prevalent weather conditions down there and the likely water temperatures. and the just what it must have been like uh, to be cast into the water. Just supposing you were lucky enough to be a survivor who wasn't killed uh, by the actual explosion. Well, if I'd been that commanding officer, if all spite had been in the same position, I'd have done exactly the same. Uh, I only hope that I'd have done it with as much technical proficiency as he did. Um, but, uh, I'd have done it because that was what was required to win the war. I don't 
don't think I've taken much pleasure in doing so.